good. Next scenario. In this interesting scenario, we're going to have repeated quadratic factors. So here you have the case that you're dealing with repeated quadratic factors. Well, give us example. You're going to have eight x cubed plus 13 x divided by k. I have x squared plus two. This guy is already a quadratic expression and I'm going to raise it to the second power as well. So I have a quadratic expression which is multiplied by itself. So this is the case that we have repeated quadratic factor. The quadratic factor is x squared plus two and you multiply that by itself. So you have repeating quadratic expression. The quadratic expression is repeated twice. So x squared plus two is repeated twice. Okay, what should I do here then? Well, in this case, since you have quadratic expression repeated twice, you're going to end up with two fractions. Okay, first fraction plus the second fraction. Our very first fraction has the denominator x squared plus two, x squared plus two. And the second fraction has x squared plus two raised to the second power. So x squared plus two to the second power. As you guessed on the first numerator, one degree less than a quadratic expression is going to be a linear expression. So you're going to have ax plus b. ax plus b. Okay. So what should I do here? Since you have a quadratic expression, again, I don't care about this exponent. I just look at the quantity inside parentheses. I again have a quadratic expression, x squared plus two, one degree less than a quadratic expression. This is the quantity that you're looking at. It's going to be a linear expression. So you're going to have another linear expression like cx plus d, on the numerator. So Cx plus D. Plus D. So I'm happy that I have enough color markers so we can separate these from each other. Okay, so we end up with two, two partial fractions. Now our job is to identify A, B, C, and D. As usual, we're going to take the common denominator between these two, the least common denominator. When you're talking about the common denominator, as a mathematician, you need to find the least common denominator. So the common denominator between these is x squared plus two to the second. The common denominator is x squared plus two to the second power. Very good. So your first fraction, it has one of the factors. It doesn't have the second factor. So you're going to multiply the numerator and the denominator by x squared plus two. So you have ax plus b. Don't forget parentheses because eventually you have to um, multiply these two binomials. And the denominator, you have x squared plus two. And the second fraction stays the same because it already has the denominator that you're looking for. Copy this guy down here, x squared plus two to the second power, cx plus d. Here we go. Okay. Now, since these two have the same denominator, you're going to just write down one denominator and add the numerators. So this guy becomes one fraction, x squared plus two to the second power, copy down ax plus b. Oh, 
plus b multiplied by x squared plus 2 plus cx plus d. Okay, that's good. Very good. This fraction is equal to the original fraction. No doubt there. They have the same denominator, x squared plus 2 to the second. The numerators must be the same. So now our job is to set these numerators equal to each other and find the missing elements, 8x cubed plus 13x. OK, here, 8x plus b. I need to distribute these into parentheses, then simplify. We have work to do. Cx plus d. So Cx plus d. Very good. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to distribute Ax into parentheses. Then I'm going to distribute b into parentheses. So these are the things that I'm going to do. Let me see if I have any other color. Yes. There we go. So I have 8x cubed plus 13x, which is equal to ax times x squared is ax cubed. Plus 2ax. Now for the b, bx squared plus 2b. bx squared plus 2b. I'm going to copy down cx plus d. cx plus d. That is my purple. My purple is just right here. Okay, perfect. Now take a look, everybody. 8x cubed, ax cubed. These must be equal to each other. x cubed and x cubed are the same. The coefficients must be the same. So what's the meaning of that? It means that 8 is a, or a is nothing but 8. Cool. Very good. So far, so good. I found my a. a is 8. 8x. Eight right. Now, what else do I have? On this side, I have 13x. On this side, I have 2ax. I have cx, and that's it. OK, wasn't that bad. 13x is 2ax plus cx. 2ax plus cx. So what's the meaning of that? It means that 13 is 2a plus c. 2a plus c, but I already know a is equal to 8, am I right? This is my a, a is 8. So 13 is 2 times 8 plus c. Very good. 13 is 16 plus c, and c becomes negative 3. My C is negative two. Perfect. Very good. Well, you might say, hey, I have the X squared here. I have some constants. I don't have anything on the other side. What's the meaning of that? When you don't see anything else, it means that all of these are zeros. Take a look, everybody. Be careful here. This guy on the other side is 0x squared plus 0 as constant. These are all zeros. That's why it disappeared. There is nothing here. When we have 0, we don't write anything for that. 0. OK, so take a look now. I have 0x squared, and I have bx squared. What's the meaning of that? It means that my b 
is equal to zero. Zero. X squared is equal to BX squared. BX squared. Okay, so it means that there is no coefficient for X squared. It means that B must be zero. We don't have any other choice. B is zero. B is zero. So my first fraction is just 8x divided by x squared plus 2. What about the constant? I have constant 2b plus b equal to 0. So 2b plus d. There is my purple plus d is nothing but zero. Guys, remember that we don't have any constant here. It means that the constant is officially zero. Constant is officially zero. So this is zero. But we know that b is zero. It means that I have zero plus d equal to zero. So what's the meaning of that? It means that my d is zero. b and d are zero values. d is zero. Very good. So d is zero. This is the fraction, partial fractions that we have 8x divided by x squared plus 2 plus negative 3x divided by x squared plus 2 to the second power.